Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another episode of Power Platform TV. Today we're going to do some stuff in our tools series. So basically, if you're a developer, if you're a consultant, if you're a user of D365 and the Power Platform, there's so many great tools out there that can help you build solutions and, and, and manage environments as well. And so today we're going to take a look at one of these tools and it is the Dataverse REST Builder. And you can see here I did a blog post on this. Uh, kind of recently. And this is one of those tools that you uh, basically you can use a lot, especially if you're a developer. And if we rewind back in time a little bit, there was a tool out there that was called the CRM REST Builder that was built by uh, Jason Latimer. And that was one of those tools as well that if you were a developer and you worked in D365, you were using that tool all the time. If you were writing any kind of coding and uh, building out apps, you were basically wanting to use this tool that would gen and it would generate code for you. And then over time, that tool got phased out. And, uh, and then this guy here, Guido Prete, he decided to uh, create a modern version of the tool. And uh, that's where we end up with this Dataverse REST Builder now. So this is really uh, his creation and uh, he's done an amazing job for the community. So we're going to look today at how to use the tool. And there's a couple of ways you can do it. There's actually three ways you can run the tool. Uh, there is a through a managed solution. So it'll pop up in D365. And there's also a XRM toolbox plugin that you can use. And then there's also uh, the, uh, the Dataverse dev tools that you can use this with as well. Okay. So we're going to take a look at the first two. I'll try to do uh, Dataverse dev tools in another video. But uh, yeah, this is really powerful. So let's go take a look at it. So the starting point here is XRM Toolbox. So let's let's start with uh, installing the plugin for the Dataverse REST Builder and using it here. So the first thing I'm going to do, uh, if you haven't downloaded the XRM Toolbox, go ahead and do that. So now to connect up to the org, I'm just going to go over here and click Connect. And now I'm connected to my org. So to install the plugin, go up here to configuration, and then you're going to click on tool library. And here, wait for this to load. And this is where we have a list of all the uh, tools out there. So you can see there's 262 tools. Uh, so, so much good stuff out here. And if we type in rest, we get here uh, any uh, of the tools that have the word rest in it. And this is the one we want here, the Dataverse REST Builder. And uh, you can see here all the information about it, right? So if you want to go ahead and install it, you click the install button. And now it says installation done. We can close this. And now if we go over to our tools tab here, uh, we can see here that I have a lot of tools installed. And if I just filter this down by the word rest, this is the one we want here. So I'm going to click on this to open it. And we could see here that the uh, the tools opened, right? So first thing we want to do is we want to go over here to uh, to file, and we're going to uh, create a new collection. And uh, you can name the collection anything you want here. If I right click and rename, I can rename it to whatever I want. And here we have a request. So this is just an empty request. And uh, we can do the same thing with this. We can rename requests, we can duplicate them, we can delete them. And this is a nice way to kind of store these, um, these requests that we're doing because you can basically go off and save these collections and then uh, import them whenever you want, basically, you know. So you can build up a collection of these, uh, these collections, <laughs> collection of collections. And then uh, anytime you want to run these, you can just import this and, uh, and run them. So let's take a look at building out a request. And the idea of the tool is that rather than uh, writing out code manually, this is going to generate the code for us, right? So if we're doing a retrieve multiple, for example, or we want to do a, a create and we want to do this through JavaScript, uh, rather than trying to figure out the JavaScript by ourselves, we can just come in here and, and tell the tool what we want to do, and it will go and generate the code for us. So it just saves so much time and it's really nice and clean. So uh, let's take a look at one example here. Let's say I want to do a retrieve multiple off accounts. Okay, so I click on retrieve multiple 
and you'll see here that the first tab is configure and basically we have the uh, web API version here and we have uh, the process whether you want it to be synchronous or async uh, we have token header here we have whether we want to impersonate or not and we have all of this different uh, capabilities that we can add to our query right now the next one you'll want is table so so here is where we get to select our dataverse table and I'm going to go with account here and it says here that uh, it's retrieving the table information so it's basically going off and grabbing all the metadata so that uh, we can go ahead and then select the any fields that we want in the query or anything like that so now that that's come back we can go over here to columns and I'm just going to select uh, some some fields let's select this one this one this one and it's nice how you can just do this multi-select you know without uh, having to come back in here um, a lot of the way that a lot of the design of this tool has been really thought out you can see so I'm selecting three fields and here we have relationships if we want to uh, do anything with that and I'm going to just going to leave that as it is for now and now we have the filter by and the order by so let's go ahead and click start to filter by and I'm just going to do a really simple one I'm going to do the status and I'm going to say if the status is equal to and then you could see here it's automatically pulling these values here right so I don't have to think about like well this is an option set what's the number for active is it zero or one right it's automatically pulling this in here so I'm going to select active here uh, so I want to only basically pull back uh, accounts that are active right and then we can do and I can continue add more of these if I want uh, and then there's the order by and so I'm going to click on this and I'm just going to say let's order by the account name and we'll make it and then we have ascending or descending I'll just keep it at ascending and if we scroll down that's all that we have here and and so now our query is basically set up and ready to go right so if I were to click on one of these other tabs like let's take a look at xrm.webapi the code's already here right so let's take a look at this so we have here uh, basically we have the xrm.webapi.online.retrieve multiple records and we have the account in here and we're doing a select and we have those three fields that we selected and then we have the filter and we have the state code is equal to zero and then we have an order by equal to name ascending okay and then once we get that back then we're running this success function here we are automatically uh, logging this out to the console the results that we get back and then we are also automatically getting the result and putting it into these variables for each of these columns that have been returned okay and you can see here the rating code is a good one here this has the uh, the choice here and then we have the actual uh, we have this formatted value and if there's any errors down here it's going to output that to the console as well right so uh, now the, now note this here and I did miss this the first time but this says uh, xrm.webapi is not available when the dataverse rest builder is executed inside of the xrm toolbox so this button here where it says move to the code editor um, if you if we go ahead and click on this right it takes us over to this editor tab and then we have this execute code and you know the deal with this tool is that the code of the tool is shared between the uh, XRM toolbox as well as in D365 right so so this code is going to work in D365 but because we're in the context of the XRM toolbox at the moment if I were to click execute code then you'll see that it's actually not going to run right so that's what that message is uh, back over here and so we'll see it running properly um, shortly but that, that's you know that's got that's really more for you uh, just so you don't miss this right but it doesn't take anything away from the tool so so that's that if we want to go over to fetch over here we see that we have the uh, fetch syntax here as well we can use jQuery this is already written out for us um, XHR is still he is here as well so if you wanted to do it in in this particular way we can we can absolutely do that uh, we have portals here this is really cool and you can see here this is a preview feature and then it has some documentation links as well so uh, really nice how 
how, how this is all coming together, right? Then we have the editor, that's where we were before, and the results. So uh, once this is run, you'll you'll see that code in there, uh, the, the data coming back. And then we have here Power Automate. So with Power Automate, if you were to use the, the list rows connector, then uh, this is basically the input that you can provide to that connector. So you don't have to think too hard about it, right? You know, you just open up Power Automate and you can go and paste these fields in and uh, then just run that flow and it will pull back the same data because we're doing a, a list over there and we're doing a fetch on our side, right? Uh, retrieve multiple. So, so that's Power Automate, uh, very cool. We have the fetch XML here, right? So if we wanted to throw this into uh, fetch XML builder, for example, we could do that and this would, uh, this would run in there. And then obviously fetch queries are used all over D365. So you can uh, use this generated fetch XML query to, to get back data. And then we have the Power Query M as well. So if you're using Power BI, you can uh, copy this code into Power Query. And then, uh, you know, if you're familiar with Power Query, you can see here, this is basically uh, getting this from the data source and then running the, the query here. And uh, so you can basically use the output of this, of this data into, in your uh, Power BI reports. So let's go ahead and test this uh, code out. Uh, what I'm gonna do is click copy code here. And so we have the XRM Web API code and let's take this over to D365 and run it in the console. Okay, so here I am in D365 and I'm going to go over to the tools for the browser. And let me just clear this out. And I'm now gonna just do a control V and there's our query automatically generated by the uh, REST builder. And now I'm going to click enter and here's our entities coming back, right? So if we look at this, I have four accounts here that are active that I can see, right? So uh, this is basically run the uh, XRM web API that was completely generated and it is outputting the, uh, the, the accounts here. And then you can see, obviously, if I wanted to do anything with this Auto these auto-generated fields, I could do that as well, right? So this code is working uh, totally as expected. So, so let's look now at how we can run this directly inside of D365. So if we go back over to uh, the post that I wrote, and I have a link in here, so I'm going to scroll down to that link. And so we can see here that we have the manage solution for this, right? So I'm going to go ahead and click on this link here and it takes us over to Guido's uh, GitHub page. And here is the Dataverse REST builder manage zip file, right? So I'm now going to click on this and it's going to download the file and I have that there ready to go. So now I'm going to go into uh, make.powerapps.com and we will uh, bring in this solution. So I'm going to click on solutions. I'm going to click on import. Actually, first let's change the environment to the correct environment. And now I'm going to click on solutions, click on import and browse and select the, select the file that was downloaded, the manage zip file, click next and then we can see here the details this all looks good and i'm going to click import okay let's give that a second okay so we see that that has been successfully imported so now let's go back over to our app and if i just close this down here and what we'll do is, uh, so if I click on here, I'm in the customer service hub app now, but if I click on this, we'll see here, the apps will refresh and we see here is the Dataverse REST builder, right? So it's in here as a unified interface app and I can go ahead and click on it. And this is loading up here. And here we have, so this is looking familiar, right? So this is what we saw in XRM toolbox. And we can now go ahead and use it within D365. 
So if I can, if I go ahead and create a new collection, click on request, and then let's go ahead and just do the same thing. So if I do a retrieve multiple, and if I select a account, and if we select, so let's go ahead and select the name, and that's it for now. And you know, obviously, you make it as complex as you want, but then if I go ahead now to xrm.webapi, and if I select uh, move code to editor, and then now it's in the editor, and it says here console messages will appear inside of the results tab. Okay, so if I uh, click on this now, then we can see here that's printing out to the console log uh, the results of the query, right? So all I was really doing is getting back the account uh, name and then uh, these other fields are coming in as well. So so this is now running within D365. So, you know, that's, that's a kind of a nice feature as well, just to be able to run this. And I just want to be able to... And I just want to show as well the request types uh, again because you know these are these are important here. So we have retrieve single, retrieve multiple. We have create, update, delete, associate, disassociate, retrieve next link, uh, predefined query, execute a custom API, right? Execute a custom action, execute action, execute function, execute work uh, workflow, manage file data, manage image data. So, so many things that you can, uh, so many types of requests here that you can generate. So it's a really powerful tool. And uh, thank you, Guido, for uh, putting so much work into this. Hope you guys enjoyed. So that's it, guys. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and of course, check out my blog at carldesuza.com.